um, anyway, thank you all very much for coming. Um, you know, it's, let me first say that it's an enormous privilege, honor uh, to be holding the position of the governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka. As I told my colleagues yesterday, um, uh, when I took up my appointment, this is one of the very great institutions in the country. Uh, it's an institution with a very illustrious and prestigious past. And the primary responsibility of the governor is to uphold its reputation and credibility. So arguably my most important duty is to make sure that this organization's reputation, prestige, credibility is upheld. And I intend to do my best to do that. And clearly I'm also grateful to His Excellency the President for uh, giving me the opportunity to serve as the Governor of the Central Bank of Sri Lanka uh, and for the support that the Prime Minister and Finance Minister have given uh, to this appointment. Um, now the appointment has some challenges uh, but in my view there are great opportunities as well because this country I think has the potential to have a major leap forward in terms of its development trajectory. Now why do I say that? Because if you look back at the last 50 years, you can argue that this is probably the best chance that we've had. Because I don't know how many of you have done some economic history of Sri Lanka, but from the late 1950s, for about 25 years, the terms of trade of this country declined in a secular way. We were a tea, rubber, coconut economy, and the prices of our commodities fell in a prolonged and sustained way. And at that time, just when those adverse terms of trade effects through those commodity price declines were coming through, our population was increasing very fast. So the surplus in the economy was coming down, the number of people was going up. That made economic management very difficult, and this acted as a big drag on the development prospects of the country. Then also, for a period, we had um, inward-looking economic policies, which for a relatively small country is inappropriate. When you have a small domestic market, if you try to center your development on the basis of the domestic market, you don't get very far. So that was another drag on the economic prospects of the country. Then we liberalized the economy, but the prolonged conflict acted as another drag. Now today, if you look around, we don't really have such major drawbacks, major constraints which are holding back our economy. In addition, we are in Asia, which is the most dynamic region in the world. Okay, there has been some slowdown in Asia, partly because China is rebalancing its economy, but it's still the most dynamic region in the world and we are located very centrally in Asia, very strategically in Asia. In fact, up to now, we have not leveraged as a strategic location. We now have every opportunity to do so because we have excellent relations with all countries now and we have every chance now to leverage our strategic location to our advantage. So then, what do we need to do to take advantage of these very favorable conditions? We don't have any big drags on our economic prospects. We have an excellent um, strategic location, what are the things that we need to do? And this is where the central bank has a major responsibility. Um, the first thing, if we are to get accelerated, sustained development, growth, employment creation, we have to have strong macroeconomic fundamentals. If we look around at 
all the successful countries, particularly in East Asia and Southeast Asia, they have based their success on strong economic, macroeconomic fundamentals. If you compare our economy over the last 30, 40 years with those economies, you will find that we tended to be a high budget deficit, high inflation, high nominal interest rate, overvalued exchange rate currency. Those countries were diametrically the opposite. They had low budget deficits, low inflation, low nominal interest rates, and an undervalued and competitive economy. So we need to have those kinds of macroeconomic fundamentals. How do we, how do we get there? Well, the government has committed itself to a medium-term stabilization program, and it is basing it on fiscal consolidation, particularly strengthening its effort on the revenue side. And it has acquired the support of the IMF in implementing the stabilization program. The IMF program does give some money, but it's not very much money. But what it does do is that it has a very powerful signaling effect in terms of adding credibility to the government's stabilization efforts. As I said, that is the first step. We need to stabilize our economy, get strong macroeconomic fundamentals. That is the key building block. And the central bank has a key role to play through its the con conduct of its monetary and exchange rate policies in particular. On top of that, it has to make sure that there is financial sector stability. So these are the key preoccupations of my senior colleagues, and I hope to work with them to achieve these objectives. And if we are able to implement the stabilization program well, um, the Prime Minister is expected to announce his five-year plan during the course of this month, which should give us a good idea of what are the, some of the structural measures that are going to be taken to strengthen the growth and employment generation framework of the economy. Um, and in addition to that, there are some projects and programs. The Western Region Megapolis uh, 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 program the Hambantota Development Program, where China is going to play a big role. Singapore is doing a, a, a master plan for Trincomalee. Japan, a master plan for, for candy. Um, so in, in addition to that, um, there are going to be these economic zones, which are going to be part of those master plans, and also maybe outside some of those areas, there are agricultural zones. Uh, in addition, there is going to be an effort to strengthen our education and skills development. So you're going to bring this whole package together. Um, the challenge, of course, is to implement it. Um, but let me go back to what I stated first. The central bank's job, because these other things are really outside the central bank's remit, um, but I was really mentioning those things because there, there are some plans to take the country to a different level. But to implement those successfully, we need to get the macro fundamentals right. And there the central bank has a major role to play. Uh, and uh, we in the central bank are very committed to uh, achieving those strong macroeconomic fundamentals. So let me stop with that, and I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. And I, my senior colleagues will also chip in to expand on it. Yes. Oh, no. uh, in your view, what is the main challenge at the moment as central bank governor? Well, as I said, the main challenge is to ensure that this stabilization of the economy is, is achieved in a sustained way. Because if you look at our history of the last 30, 40 years, we start implementing a, a stabilization program, but we never see it through. So we have these stop-go policies. We let the economy get overheated, then we, by, not, by having 
uh, macroeconomic policies which are not well aligned. Once the economy overheats and we have balance of payments problems and or high inflation, then we hold breaks. We put in place contractionary policies. Then again, we kind of release the brake too much and it overheats again. If you look at it, there are these repeating cycles of stop-go policies. So I think the challenge um, right now from a central bank perspective is to put in place some policies which give us sustained stabilization. This is what the countries of East and Southeast Asia managed. They got strong sustained, uh, strong uh, macroeconomic fundamentals which enable them to grow fast for 10, 15, 20 years. Now, of course, the world is a more uncertain place today. It becomes more difficult than when they did it. But still, the prospects are there, because, as I said, because of our location, because of our ex excellent relations we have with a number of countries, particularly the countries which have cash in East and Southeast Asia, um, we too can accelerate our development process. But the first fundamental challenge is to get strong sound macroeconomic fundamentals which can be sustained not something which will again you know uh, get reversed and get out of alignment so within the central bank i think that is really the challenge to make our contribution uh, we need to have good fiscal and monetary coordination clearly the finance ministry has a very important role to play as well but we need to play our role as well to to stabilize the economy. That, that, I think, is a real challenge. And if we are able to achieve that, I think we have a very good chance of getting the country to a different level of, of development. But, you know, it's not easy. Stabilization programs mean pain, you know. That, so we need to get through that pain. But if we do get through that pain, I think uh, there is uh, prospects of, of, uh, of faster growth as we go, go forward. Uh, Governor, Governor what key, needs to be done? Uh, Sorry. key policies that need to be changed? Well, you know, if you asked me um, about four, five, six months ago, I would have come out with a list of policies. Um, not because I have now become governor of <laughs> the central bank that I am saying this, but in the last few months, there has been a shift in a positive direction. Uh, because, you know, the, stabili the government's uh, stabilization measures in terms of trying to get the budget into better order, through the f uh, revenue measures it has taken, um, that the central bank has tightened monetary policy, um, the exchange rate was allowed to uh, float a little bit. So all those measures, if you ask me, say, in, in January, February, or even March, I would have said those things had to be done. But those things have been done. So I think we are on the right track. But as I said, we have to sustain it. Um, and, and the, you know, I, and we will see, I think, in the Prime Minister's uh, five-year plan, hopefully a cohesive and coherent framework uh, for the structural policies uh, and how pro various programs and projects will fit into that. Uh, so I, I, I feel that um, the changes are underway, but, you know, it, it's um, easier to uh, to plan and, and design than it is to implement. So the implementation is going to be crucial. Uh, Governor, uh, do you think the present uh, policy rates are uh, accurate or uh, is it, uh, do you need to need, need a change in the policy rates? The, the, the inflation is uh, high, uh, credit growth is uh, heated. How do you see this? You know, the central bank undertook some tightening measures, as you know, the statutory reserve ratio was increased, the policy rate was increased 50 basis points, and you're beginning to see it take effect. We were at a, another meeting just now and where the, the Deputy Governor, Dr. Veera Singer, explained the monetary policy, the transmission mechanism actually peaks in 12 to 18 months. So the measures that have been taken on the statutory reserve requirement and the interest rate um, are beginning to work. If you see, credit growth is beginning to come down. Um, and, and this is only two, three months since those policy measures were taken. 
So if you look at the historical trend, it still has sort of nine, ten months to run before we see the full effects of the changes that were made. But I think the job of uh, my senior colleagues, uh, myself as well as um, other colleagues who are working in these areas, uh, is to monitor the situation all the time, which we will. Uh, because, you know, the world is, these days is such a fluid and fast-moving uh, scenario you have globally, those can impact on us as well. So we need to constantly monitor the situation. Um, but some measures have been taken. They seem to be having some effect. So we will watch and see.